Amen. You may be seated. Kids, you're dismissed to our kids' time down the hall, down that way. All the kids headed that direction. Take your Bibles and turn to Matthew chapter 6. Want to hear your pages turning, your phones coming on, whatever? Matthew chapter 6. Today we're going to talk about does your treasure do away with your worry or does your worry do away with your treasure? Tough question. One of those questions, one of those suggestions, if you will, that... Um, maybe doesn't seem to make sense. It's opposites. It goes in different directions. They pull against each other. Again, does worry take away your treasure? Or does treasure, your treasure, help you worry less? Man, that, both of those are true statements, depending on who you trust, depending on how you live. But what comes to mind when I think about treasure, and I ask you, what comes to your mind when you think about treasure? Matthew 6, 21 says this, Where your treasure is, there will your heart be also. And that's in the middle of the scripture we're going to read together here in just a couple of minutes. But, but I want you to think about this. What, whatever your treasure is guides you and guard your heart. Well, hold, on, hold on. Maybe whatever your treasure is distorts and even destroys your heart. Ouch. That's why I ask us during this series, especially today, in the second week of this series, just to take a look at how I hold or look or love the treasure that God has given me or the treasures that are around me or the things that are around us. Our key verse for this series is from 2 Chronicles, excuse me, 2 Corinthians 4, 7. It says, but we have this treasure in earthen containers so that the extraordinary greatness of power will be of who? Some of y'all are awake, some of you are not. So let's go again. Here we go. But we have this treasure in earthen vessels, so the surpassing greatness of the power will be of God and not from ourselves. Because here's what happens. Here's the reason why we worry, is we make the greatness about us. And maybe we don't say it out loud, but it's the way we think or the way that we live or the way that we spend our money or the way we deal with relationships. Here's the deal. God is good, and he's great, and he's all these different things, but do we really trust him? Last week in the first series, or the first, um, the first week of this series, we looked at Proverbs chapter 2, and we talked about how wisdom, the wisdom of God, or the wisdom from God, helps us trust him more and gives us our greatest treasure. And all that God does and says and plans is for his people, us. We are the ones that he treasures most. It's not about gold. It's not about things. God treasures people. You and me and the world. That's why we see from John chapter 3, verse number 16. You've heard this verse, seen it. For God so loved the world, right? You're going to have to hang with me, okay? For God so loved the world that he gave his one and only son so that whoever believes in him will not perish but have everlasting life, right? Right? For God so loved the world. Say world. world. That word in the Greek in the original language is the word cosmos. And it talks about the entire world. But John, the writer of this gospel, takes it to another level. And he makes it all about all humanity. You see, God loves people. God treasures people. We treasure all different kinds of things and go all different kinds of directions. When in fact God says it is about I want you to remember this. I sent Jesus. It's all about people. Worries rob us of our treasure. Unless our treasure lessens our worries. And I've said it several different ways. I, I'm not going to say today, you won't hear me say this, that money will make you worry less. We act like it does, don't we? Maybe a better job. A better marriage or spouse will remove your worries. Watch out, it may increase them. What I believe and assert today is that whatever we treasure, and if our treasure is in the right place, that treasuring what God says to treasure, we will literally worry less. Do you get that? Matthew chapter 6. We find ourselves in the middle of the Sermon on the Mount when Jesus gathered around him all these people and he began to talk about these discourses of life and of love and of learning and to turn his attention toward this is what a Jesus follower looks like. What a Jesus follower does. 
So let's look at the scripture together. Matthew chapter 6, beginning in verse number 19. Let's stand together as we honor God's word. Uh, by the way, you have, may have some other stuff going on around you right now. I just want to ask you to turn your attention to whatever God wants to say to you. If you need to stay seated and you're struggling, something going on, just, just give it to Jesus and spend some time with him and try to listen in. Here we go. Matthew chapter 6, beginning in verse number 19. It says, don't store up for yourselves treasure here on earth where moths eat and rust destroy and where thieves break in and steal store up for yourselves treasures in heaven where moths and rust can't destroy where thieves don't break in and steal for wherever your treasure is there will your heart be also you see your eye it's a lamp that provides light to your body and when your eye is healthy your whole body is filled with light but when your eye is unhealthy your whole body is full of darkness and even if you have light or you if you if the light you think you have is actually darkness how dark is that verse 24 you cannot serve two masters for you'll hate the one and love the other or you'll be devoted to one and despise the other you cannot serve God and your wealth that is why I tell you not to worry about everyday life whether you have enough food or drink or clothes to wear. Isn't life more than food and your body more than clothes? Look at the birds of the air. They, they don't plant or harvest or store food in barns, but your heavenly Father feeds them. Aren't you more valuable than they? Can all your worries even add one single moment to your life? And why worry about your clothing? Look at the lilies of the field and how they grow. They don't even make clothing. Yet Solomon in all his glory was not dressed as beautifully as they are. And if God cares so wonderfully for these wildflowers that are here today and thrown in the fire tomorrow, he will certainly care for you. Why do you have so little faith? So don't worry about these things saying, what are we going to eat? What are we going to drink? What are we going to wear? These things dominate the thoughts of unbelievers. But your heavenly Father is al already knows what you need. Therefore, seek First, the kingdom of God above all else. Amen. Live righteously, and he will give you everything you need. So don't worry about tomorrow. Tomorrow has enough of its own worries. Today's trouble is enough for today. Amen. Father God, we come before you today, and I do thank you for these verses of Scripture. And Lord, I pray in these next few minutes that you'll open our hearts and minds. Father, the things that we're worried about, that we're consumed with, I pray that we'll find ourselves giving them to you today. I thank you that you own all the treasure, all the gold, money, all my relationships, my children. But Father, I just confess... When my priorities are screwed up, I worry a whole lot more. God, please help us today to understand that our treasure, real treasure, is based upon you, and it will help us worry less. God, for that one listening in or that several listening in or here today that has never been saved, never asked Jesus into their heart, I pray that today would be a brand new day. The scripture tells us, you told us in Romans chapter 10, whoever will call upon the name of the Lord will be saved. For with the heart we believe and with the mouth we confess, Jesus, you are Lord. Today, speak, Father. I'm listening. Will you ask him that too? Father, will you speak today? I'm listening. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. The power that comes out of this passage is almost overwhelming. As you look at the Sermon on the Mount, one of the greatest of all passages of Scripture, Romans, uh, Matthew 5, 6, and 7, begins with the Beatitudes in chapter 5, where we hear the heart of God. Literally, people are are told, if you want to follow God, we ought to think differently. Down is the way up. Like he said, blessed are the meek. Blessed are the poor. Blessed are those who hunger. Why? For all of them will be satisfied or filled. 
Then in chapter 6, he talks to us about meeting the needs of those around us. Then he talks about the importance of prayer and seeking God. And we find ourselves now in what we've just read, dealing with treasure. Arg, we're not talking about <laughs> treasure boxes that pirates are looking for. We're not talking about full bank accounts, which would be nice. We're not talking about having the finest of things to wear or to drive or all that kind of stuff. I'm talking about what we really treasure in life ought to be the things that help us worry less and think less about things and more about God. You, you want to take that journey with me for just a second? Do your things, do your treasures, make you worry more about you than seeing God. I, I desire in, in my life, maybe you do too, I want to see more of Jesus. Are you seeing him in your life? To, to refine, or if you will, if to, to define a Jesus guy or a Jesus girl, you, you have to see that they deal with their possessions or are their treasures differently. How do we deal with things? How do we hold things? Or do our things hold us? You might go in the direction about worry and think about how our worries are all tied in and, and, and woven in, kind of like chaos, if you will. Taking us in directions we don't want to go to, yet if we turn toward God and lean on Him, a, a person of faith leaning on God and leaning on Jesus is going to worry less and see more of how our faith is turning out in a right way. So, so hear this. Trusting God means we worry less. Thus, Treasuring what God treasures assures us that we worry less. Then, treasuring what doesn't last ensures that we worry more. All right, that's sermon. Y'all can leave. I was kidding. I got a lot more to go. If you want to be a Jesus follower, in question, do you want to follow Jesus, yes or no? You will make different choices. You'll look at life differently. Much like the teacher who spoke to his son in Proverbs chapter 7, verse number 1. He said, My son, keep my words. Treasure my commands within you. Keep them. Treasure them. Look at it life differently. Then turn to the guy who, who the Bible says was a man after God's own heart, David, who was a mess up, who came running back to God, who in, intimately knew God. He, he said this in Psalms 119, verse number 11. Your laws are my treasure and my heart's delight. Psalms 119, 111. There you go. There's two reasons to treasure the things of God. But, but how can we worry less and still have life, treasure in life. How can we worry less and still have treasure in life? Thanks for asking. Let's dig in. Number one, I want to give you a word about treasure. In this scripture, Matthew chapter 6, he tells us, store up for yourselves treasures in heaven. But you know what? Most of us are storing up our treasures here on earth, aren't we? Think about it. We put our money in the bank. We, we put our, um, our thoughts in the things of this world. That my car is going to start tomorrow. Have you ever gone outside and the car didn't crank? Have you ever gone to, to write that check just to realize this one's going to bounce? Do you ever get the, the check in the mail like we did at church and the electric bill went from here to here? <laughs> yeah. We get a lot of phone calls like that around here. And we worry about life all the time. We worry about all these different kind of things going on around us. Let me ask you a question. Does worrying get you even one more minute on your life? If you'll really be honest about it, worry is going to take the clicks off your life. The more I make my heart do what it's not supposed to do, the more my heart's not going to do what it's supposed to do. That might have been confusing. Literally, put the garbage in and you're going to get garbage out. Put the God in and you're going to get the God out. Literally, treasure what God says, what he does, and things are going to happen. Listen, we all treasure something. We're all storing up treasure. Do you do that? Do you store up treasure, yes or no? Yes. You know, here's what I do at my house. I'm going to save this for a rainy day. I'm going to hold on to this because I'm going to need it sometime. And then 10 years, 15 years later, I go looking for something and I find something that I said I'm going to need and I never needed it. 
Do you like to watch that show, Hoarders? I don't. It makes me stressed. I've been to some of your houses, too. <laughs> I'm sorry. But, but we do that, and I, I, I don't like to throw things away. I like, I'm a saver. <laughs> Not at money most of the time. But here's the deal. We treasure things that we shouldn't treasure because those things make us worry more. I buy more stuff, it costs me more. I eat the wrong thing, it costs me more. I choose that relationship, it really costs me more. Y'all with me? We're all storing up our treasure in all different kinds of things, but God tells us here through the pen of Matthew, it's actually in red, therefore it's what Jesus said. This is from the Sermon on the Mount. He literally said, stop storing up your things in earth. Why? Because first of all, it's temporary. Why do you store up things that are temporary that doesn't last? Have you noticed that? Have you ever bought something and you said, I'm going to eat that or I'm going to use that, and you just go back to find it and it's moldy and can't be used anymore? Yeah, you go ahead and eat all the mold you want to. I'm not. I don't like things that are green. I've just started eating avocados. They are some of the sweetest, but I don't like green stuff very much. Maybe because it's mold. I don't know. And Cuba, that's where we ate the avocados the first time. That's kind of where I started liking it. But, but here's the deal. Um, some of the things we trust are, are what moths eat. Clothing, right? Or rust. You ever seen a, a real pretty, guys, you ever seen a real pretty truck? You know, it's all souped up and everything's just perfect. And you get a little bit closer and you see it's got rust. It's got rust down the bed of it or something like that. that that's what happens, isn't it? Things begin to fall apart. I, I've told you about a ship before. They brought it into San Diego or the port or wherever it was out there in California. And they began to take the paint off those big stacks that were on it. And they were scraping all the paint off so they could put more paint on. And when they scraped off all the paint, like five, six, eight, ten coats of paint, underneath it, the stacks were gone because rust had taken it all away. Isn't that what we do in our lives? We store up all this stuff and everything's grand and then it all falls apart because it's not what God told us to treasure. What kind of treasures? Money, possessions, relationships. Remember what the scripture tells us, John chapter 10, verse number 10. This is our theme verse here at the Community Fellowship. It says, the thief comes only to steal, kill, and destroy. I, Jesus, came that they might have life and have it abundantly. The world's going to try to distract you, distort you, and even destroy you. Jesus says, I'm here to build you up. The world's going to tear you down. God's going to pick us up. That's why we have to choose the treasures that literally lift us up. Don't choose earth, choose heaven. Why? Because the stuff here is temporal. The stuff there is eternal. Y'all with me? Been listening to a lot of sermons by this guy named Tony Evans. You may have heard him before. And one of the things he said this week that just hit my heart, I was actually running on Friday morning up at the campground where we were staying, and it went something like this. It says, if you're on your way to heaven, but you don't care about anyone else getting to heaven, you've got a problem. We got the greatest treasure of all, a gift of eternity in heaven, yet I don't, I don't tell anybody else about it. And we need to store up for ourselves treasures in heaven where moth and rust can't come in, where thieves can't come in. What kind of treasures are those? You know what they are? It's living and breathing and bleeding. You and me. People. By the way, stuff doesn't tick me off very often, but people do. You got any of those? You got any folks that you just don't want to be around because they make you mad? Some of you aren't listening. Okay. Okay. We're going to take two offerings today. If you didn't listen, you give double, okay? And if you didn't hear what I'm saying, put the guys at the door. We get them. Look at your heart. Listen to Luke chapter 21, verses 34 through 36. Listen to this. Be on guard so that your heart will not be weighted down with dissipation and drunkenness and the worries of life. That the day will come or will not come on you suddenly like a trap. For it will come... And upend all those who dwell on the face of the earth. Keep alert at all times, praying that you may have strength to escape these things that are about to take place and to stand before the Son of Man. What keeps us from standing strong? The life. What keeps you from standing strong? The difficulties that my body has. 
What keeps you from standing strong? Not having any money in the bank. Well, you know what? We've looked in the wrong direction. We need to watch what we desire because our treasures often consume our hearts. What consumes your heart? What do you think about a lot? Number one, a word about treasure. Number two, how about revealing our treasures? Have you ever had something revealed in your life? You go to the doctor and he, he finds this and he's like, oop, what's that? You know, I, I know... I know what's going on in my life. I know everything that's going on. But you know, there are sometimes, just like Tim was talking about his buddy, that the funeral was last weekend. He passed out at work, and then a few days or a few months later, he was gone. We, we don't know what's going on in us or, or around us. Sometimes we need something to reveal, like a doctor or a test. We need to reveal. Why do you teachers give those tests in your classroom? It's because it reveals what a child knows or a student knows. Here, this is what God says in the scripture to us. He says in verse number 22, You see, the eye is like a lamp that provides light to your body. So here's your question for you. What you looking at? Whatever you're looking at longingly and lovingly, you become like. Whatever you look at a lot is what you treasure. What is it? You see, the eye is a lamp, and it gives direction. John 12, 35, Jesus replied, My light will shine for you just a little while longer, so walk in the light while you can, so that the darkness will not overtake you. Those who walk in the darkness cannot see where they are going. The reason why we need to treasure the right stuff is because the treasure distorts our vision. The wrong treasure distorts what we see. When your eye is unhealthy, the scripture says here, you'll be full of darkness. When your eye is healthy, you'll be full of light. Psalms 36, 9, for you are a fountain of light and the light by which we see. David talking to God himself, you are literally a fountain of light. And he says in the scripture, Matthew chapter 6, he says when your eye is healthy, it floods your body with light. You'll be able to see John 1, 5, and the light shines in the darkness, and the darkness cannot extinguish it. Why? Because you treasure the right things. There is light in your life, and you're not covering up sin. In fact, you've confessed your sin, and it's become um, forgiven. Y'all with me on that? Forgiveness is powerful. When we cover our sins, when, when we continue to amass or treasure things that we don't need to be treasuring, oftentimes we cover them up, and it gets us in trouble. What are we trying to hide? You know what? What are we trying to uncover so that God can take care of more of my life? And he goes on to talk about who you serve. This is good. Verse 24, no one can serve two masters. For he'll hate the one and love the other or be devoted to one and despise the other. Here's the problem. You can't have divided loyalty. You can't say one thing and do another. What's that? That's a hypocrite, right? You can't, you can't do one thing and then another. You're not supposed to be a cop and a criminal. It happens a lot. I mean, take it a little further. You can't be a politician and a criminal. Oh, wait. You can't be in the Taliban and love people. You can't not follow Jesus and think you're okay. I, I believe this with all my heart. We have divided loyalty inside of us because we treasure so many of the wrong things. And those things that we treasure are making us be buried under or pushed down by this treasure that the world says is all okay. And I, I'll be honest again with you that when, when we, Julie and I and our family have more debt, I feel like I'm pushed down and I'm not free. Y'all with me? When we have all this stuff that's going on and, and I've lost 77 pounds so far, I feel like it's freeing. You know what happens when you and I get free of some of this treasure? We begin to be free, free indeed, as Martin Luther King said. You know what God said about it? And John, he said, and the truth will set you free. This is what Jesus says. Treasure the right, seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all these things will be added unto you. Why is that? 
Because you treasure the things that honor God. James 1, 8, their loyalty is divided between God and the world. They're unstable in everything they do. Divided loyalty. Divided loyalty, what does it look like? Real quick. Divided loyalty is being married to one person and cheating with somebody else. Divided loyalty is saying you love God and not coming to church. And yes, I said it. Divided loyalty is saying that you love God and what he does and don't tithe. That preacher's gone to meddling today. Divided loyalty is saying you want to get healthy and never exercising. Divided loyalty is saying you love Jesus and never ever open in the Bible. The scripture just said there in James, it said they are unstable. Do you know what unstable looks like? The older I get, the more I realize I've got muscles and tendons and things like that. You know what? You've heard this before. You know, when I, I fall down, I start looking for things I can do. Or like when I have to tie my shoes, I'm looking, what can I do before I get up? You know what I'm talking about? It's harder to heal. I'm learning some things about divided loyalty because I believe this. God is trying to clear things out so that I can see him clearly. He wants us to clear out the things that are not of him so that we can have more of him. Oh, y'all, this is good preaching. But I'll tell you this, that's not my words. Those have to be his words because they sure aren't mine. You cannot serve two leaders. Luke chapter 12, verse 33. Sell your possessions, give to those in need. This will store up treasure for you in heaven. And all the purses of heaven never get old or develop holes. Your treasures will be safe. No thief can steal it. No moth can destroy it. Why is that? Because we treasure the right things. Money, treasures. He says here in verse number 24, again, at the end of it, you cannot serve God and be enslaved to your money. Literally, I like the way the New Living says, enslaved to your money. Another translation says, you can't serve God and your wealth. There are a lot of people out there that are really wealthy. You've probably met some of them like I have. And you know what? Most of them don't give a rat. Excuse me, I better be careful what I say. They don't care what God says but we'd rather have the stock market or we'd rather see what's going on. Have you watched prices go up recently? I mean, everything goes up. But the one thing that bothers me the most, eating healthy costs more than not eating healthy. That's just weird. Do you know what else bothers me? The ways of the world that seem so fun make me end up not having much fun. Because the consequences of my choices burden me big time. Y'all with me? So I, I quacked a while ago, and it was a dead duck. I heard y'all <laughs> say that. I, I remember when I was a teenager, um, my two Sunday school teachers um, taught me how to duck hunt. Don't take me duck hunting, okay? I'm not a real good shot. That's just being honest with you today. But I do want to tell you this. <clears throat> I remember <laughs> I remember going with one of my buddies, Larry, duck hunting one day. We were in his Bronco. You know those big Broncos, not like the little sissy Broncos today. The big Broncos. And we were going through this field. I may have told you some of this before. But I remember flying through that field after duck hunting, and that Bronco went flat. Opened the doors, mud. I mean bad. And we were sunk. We had to go get somebody else to pull us out. I had to go get a good Chevy to pull out the Ford. I got you on that. Okay, stop meddling. Here's the deal. We get our lives so stuck in the mud from the treasures of the world that we can't even walk out to be with Jesus. Got to dig out. We dug a lot that night. That's also the same guy. I'm going to get this bad. 
You know you wear waders? I don't know if you've ever been duck hunting before you wear waders. This is the same guy that I asked one day. I said, I'm cold. I want out of here. Show me the way to get out of this duck. I was in a, a flooded field. He said, walk right by that direction and you'll be fine. He sent me through a creek bed and it went over my head. And it was like 35 degrees outside. I was mad. Sink me. We, that's what happens in our lives, y'all. When we trust the ways of the world <laughs> or trust the people that don't care, they're going to tell us to do the things that don't matter. By the way, we have an enemy. And that enemy makes things look so good. Y'all with me? And we in trouble when we follow his way. Matthew chapter 13, verse number 22. The seed that fell among the thorns represents those who hear the word of God, but all too quickly the message is crowded out by the worries of life and the lure of wealth so nothing can be produced. The lures, the worries, the things that take us in the wrong direction. What reveals our treasure oftentimes is the light that we allow in our lives. How, how, verse number three, part three of the message, worry removes treasure. In verse number five, he starts talking about some things that, that rob us of our treasure or that we worry about, right? We worry about food and drink and clothing. Do you all ever worry about those things? Hey, if you're in church right now, you're thinking about what am I going to eat for lunch? Right? Some of you are like, he's going to preach too long and I'm going to get too hungry right there now. I'm leaving. I'm out of here. I don't care. I do care. I'm hungry, okay? <laughs> How many times do we allow the worries of this world, what I'm going to eat, what I'm going to drink, what I'm going to wear, how I'm going to pay the bill, how, how I'm going to answer that question when she asked me, because I messed up again? All of these things of the world keep me from being able to see God. Listen, Proverbs 12, 25. If you don't get any other verse, this is the one to get today. Worry weighs a person down. An encouraging word cheers a person up. Amen. Real easy verse. Worry weighs you down. Right? Yeah. All the worries of this world can't get us to heaven. Food, drink, clothing, bills, stuff. Life is more than this. That's what he said. 1 John 2.15 Do not love the world nor the things that it offers. For when you love the world, you do not have the love of the Father in you. Do we love God or the world more? Keep going. The worries about the wrong stuff, it's never enough. <laughs> Give me more. Right? I, I, I need a, a, a job, a promotion. And then I need another job and promotion. Oh, I need that better vehicle. Or I need that bigger engine. Or I, I, I need that more and more. Never enough. How about this? Comparing and competing. Do, do you ever compete with somebody else? I mean, the Joneses that live down the street, they got this and this and this. And so you try to go get this and this and this, only to realize you don't even like the Joneses. Right? Right? but I want to look the part. How often are we comparing ourselves to somebody else? Well, he got this three-ring binder. Mom, I want that three-ring binder. They use mechanical pencils. I, you know, I just, I'm going back to my childhood, right? We worried about bubble gum. When you were in school, did you ever take the glue and put it on your hands and then try to, to get it off? And our kids are having to deal with legalized marijuana. I never thought about that, right? Heck, I was going home in the afternoon to play with my trucks. I wasn't going to have to worry about what I eat. How many times are we worried about all this stuff and it keeps us from seeing and knowing how good our God is? Philippians 4, 6, and 7. I've quoted it a million times in my life, I think. But listen, don't worry about anything. Instead, pray about everything. Tell God what you need. Thank Him for what He's done. Then you will experience God's peace, which exceeds anything we can understand. Why? Because His peace will guard your hearts and minds as you live in Christ Jesus. Amen. Don't worry about anything. Number four, the last thing I want to share with you today. We, we've talked about what you treasure or a word about treasure. We've talked about how treasures um, take things away from us. But how does our treasure remove our worry? Here we go. Real quick, verse number 26. <clears throat> it gives us some thoughts. Look at the birds. 
Do y'all like birds? I, I, I was running yesterday, no, on Friday morning, and a turkey flew in front of me. Do you know how big those birds are? I'm thinking he's going to eat me. Look at the birds. They don't plant or harvest or store food in barns, but God feeds them. Verse 28, look at the lilies of the field. I, I, have, I have this lady that I live with who usually can't make flowers look very good. I want to tell you, the stuff in front of our house right now, it is looking good. You know, roses and uh, what else we got out there? What? Vinca, whatever that is. It's pretty, though. Look at the lilies. Look at the flowers and how, how beautiful they are and how they grow. But you know what? They'll be gone tomorrow. But God cares for them. And what does he say about the birds? He says, aren't you more important than the birds? The lilies? God clothed them. Aren't you more important than the lilies? Isaiah 26, verse 3. The steadfast of mind you will keep in perfect peace because he trusts in you. When you know that God cares for you and God's going to take care of you, you're going to be steady. Are you all with me? When you trust God for the things that are going on around you, your life will end up steady. I, I desperately need steady, stable. God says you're valuable. 1 Peter 5, 7, give all your worries and cares to God. Why? Because he cares about you. You ever get ushy and gushy about somebody who says, I love you? I'm going to ask again because I want you to answer me. Do you ever get ushy and gushy when somebody says, I love you? Yeah. I mean, the older we get, the more the... Uh, but you've got to remember that day. The first time she said, I love you, I'm like, ooh. You know, stomach started fluttering. If we'll just have a childlike wonder and realize the God who created everything loves me more than anything, that'll make your stomach go, ooh, ooh, again. Why? Because we worry about stuff it's going to be gone. Are your worries killing your treasure? Or are your treasures killing your worry? You're more valuable. You, you have faith because God cares about you. Therefore, worry about the right things. Stop worrying about the wrong things. What you eat, you drink, how you're going to pay that. See, that dominates the life. This scripture says that it dominates the unbeliever. It dominates that person who doesn't really believe what God says. Be dominated by what God says. Here you go. John 14, 1. Don't let your heart be troubled. Believe in God. Believe also in me. Anybody ever had a heart that's troubled? Yes or no? Did you watch any of the news footage or see any pictures from Afghanistan this past week? How difficult was watching those people fall from that airplane they were trying to get onto? I praise God that we live in a place where we're still free. But you know what? I have the opportunity every day to confess Him as Lord or to confess me as Lord. And by the way, you're not going to catch me out on the street out there or even in my home saying, look at me, I'm Lord. But I act like it. You all with me? I act like it every day. We act like it every day. What I look at for a long period of time displays, reminds me what my treasure is. Therefore, stop looking at others and start looking at God. Why is Colossians 3, 2 so important? It says, set your mind on things above, not on things of the world. Because the more I set my mind on Him, the less I care about the world. The less I look at Him, the more troubles I have. 
John 16, These things I have spoken to you so that in me you may have peace because in this world you will have tribulation. But take courage. I have overcome the world. Amen. Who is I? Gee, not me. Not that deputy that's going to pull you over. <laughs> not the lawyer that's going to help you out. Not the banker who's going to give you the loan. Not the postman or postwoman that's going to put the mail in the box at home. But Jesus who says, you are more valuable than the sparrow. And God's going to take care of you better than he takes care of the flowers. Question, what do you treasure? Worry about the right things by doing this. Seek the kingdom of God above all else. Live righteously. And you'll have everything you need. He'll take care of you. Are you worried about anything? Yeah? Okay. I am too. And do you know what worry does? Worry highlights the fact that I'm not trusting him. A lack of worry highlights the fact I'm trusting him. Your call. Where's your treasure? Father God, we come to you just in these few minutes that we're together. And I pray that you confess. No, no, no. Convict us when our worries aren't 